are kind of on the slower end of the spectrum, not Kvartek's deck. His deck is looking to beat down, try to get underneath those counter spells, resolve Rotting Registor, and just kill you. Now, Huey does have a few answers, right? You have the quenches, you can try to get those to counter the Rotting Registor. On top of that, you have Brazen Borrower. That card is extremely effective against Rotting Registor, because all you gotta do is, sure, go ahead, resolve your Registor, upkeep, you discard your card, then I bounce it. That's right. Another card that, that pops up here is the two copies of Murderous Rider here for Kavartek. And you know, it's interesting. While it is effective at killing the threats for Jensen, that life loss adds up very quickly. And Jensen's deck is very adept at getting an incidental life loss. You know, two damage from an Ionize here, maybe your outburst to your face there. And all of a sudden, you get down to six or seven life, and you are not in a safe place at all. Yeah. Nice start from Huey. Kavartek needs a land, and he finds it here. Is this thing going to get quenched as well? Or is Jensen going to prioritize the borrower? Quench. Boy, that land off the top was nice for Kavartek, because otherwise it would have been go. Ooh, but that is also a very good draw from Huey with a Rouse Outburst off the top, being able to kill anything that Kavartek could have. Looks like Kavartek is just going to pass here with the ability to keep up a Murder Shrider in case William Jensen plays a Brineborn Cutthroat or, or even something like a Brazen Borrower. He could also just go for Profane Insight off of the Falmire Knight right. here in, if he doesn't find a target for it. And you see Jensen's hit the first interesting point. Wow, the decision was between Brazen Borrower and Rouse Outburst, and his, his the conclusion was neither. Yeah, I'm going to play it slow. The thing is, you know, um, it is pretty hard to kind of outgrind this Golgaria midrange deck, this Golgaria adventure deck, because all the cards are basically two for ones, right? Everything has an adventure mode, and you can cast it as a creature. It's funny. Look at his hand. They're all two for ones. Yeah, they're all two for ones. <laughs> Every card in so, so it is hard. However, Huey does have kind of the over the top card as well. If the game goes really late, then you have Gadwick the Wizard, right? Gadwick the Wizard can get you all those cards back. You play, you can Gadwick for four or five. You're probably going to find another one, and that's how that's what Huey's looking to do in this matchup. Jensen wants to make sure he gets his value off of Rouse Outburst, so he kills the Foulmire Knight and gets his card. It was another copy of Quench, and with uh, Kvartek struggling a bit for mana, the Quench is very tempting here on Profane Insight. That would keep the Foulmire Knight away as well. Yeah, but Kvartek also not all that concerned here, right? He has three murderous riders in hand, so not really afraid of any pressure no. that that, uh, that Jensen could have here. Yeah, I think that this game does look like it's going to come down to Gadwick at some point. As you mentioned, the trade-off of resources here from Jensen and from Kvartek. But if Jensen can keep hitting his land drops and get a big Gadwick for four, or maybe even five, he could easily take over the game from but And look at this, just every single card Kvartek draws is just gas. Yes. You know what I mean? Every single card is just like, hey, adventure plus creature, adventure plus creature. At some point, William's just going to run out of resources if he can't find that Gadwick. That's right. Lovestruck Beast is a problem, and there's a Falmire Knight as well. So Jensen has answers for these things. He can use Brazen Borrower to mitigate one of the creatures, perhaps the token, Scorching Dragonfire to kill the Falmire Knight, and that would strand the Lovestruck Beast from being able to attack. Yeah, and that's what he's going to do. And he can do all of those things, right? Yeah. He can bounce the token, kill a Falmire Knight, and run out the Brazen Borrower and start trying to chip away here. And this is really important here because Jensen does need to get some form of damage, repeatable damage going at some point. And Brazen Borrower is probably the best one in the matchup. Yeah. So. But as you mentioned, it's not likely long for this game with triple Murderous Rider in hand for Kvartek. He does have the ability to get that thing off the battle. Oh! oh. Ding! That with is, the wizard. That is exactly <laughs> what he wanted. Now the question is, does he want to wait a turn so that he doesn't take the five damage here from the Lovestruck Beast, right? Or does he just slam the Gadwick? Yes, slam the Gadwick for the full amount. In this case, it's four cards going into hand. And he does that now because he can hit a land. You know, you can even hit things like land into opt, and then you don't take the damage from the beast anyway, although that didn't work out this time. Yeah, so now... Kvartek has the ability to play the Great Henge, but he won't actually have the mana to cast Swift End on Murder Shredder, as he'll have access to two green and a black. Uh. So, uh, you know, the question now becomes, does he want to fire off one of these Murder Shredders? Temple of Malady was kind of an unfortunate draw. He really wanted an untapped land, as then if he did, he could actually get both Gadwick and the Brazen Borrower off the battlefield. He is going to go for Great Henge here. Interesting. 
Okay, playing for the long game here. He can play around counter magic for this one turn specifically, as Huey only has access to one blue. You can play around all kinds of stuff. And also, it helps with the race, right? Because you can just tap it to gain two life. It's true. Gaining two life a turn does add up very, very quickly and negates a lot of that incidental damage that I mentioned that Jensen's deck is so good at producing. So Jensen has one pretty straightforward play here, which is Scorching Dragon, Fire the Foulmire Knight, and get in. And then he has to plan out the rest of it. Right. Remember, he has a Castle Vantress now as well, which could enter the equation. Yeah, but at least for this next turn cycle, his hand is, is quite strong, right? Because he can play Ionize and Rouse Outburst. That's very, very big. Huge. The Great Henge is really annoying, though. Yeah. That not only the value engine, but just those two life that you mentioned that uh, Chris can gain every turn really does add up. Not only that, just casting Murderous Riders, they come into play with an additional counter. They're three fours. So the removal spells that Huey has aren't even effective against that. Yeah, and Lifelink very good, again, against this incidental damage. And you see it in the hand of Jensen right here. He's got Ionize and Rouse Outburst. That's five damage right there. But Kavartek back up to 11. I will say the, the one kind of nombo with the Great Henge is once you have it in play and you don't have a 1-1 one, one in play, <laughs> you, can, you can no longer start attacking with the Love Struck Beast as every creature that comes into play comes into play with an additional plus one, plus one counter. Kovartek now just kind of wondering how he's supposed to sequence his spells here. He knows that he wants to get those threats off the battlefield because the longer the game goes, the better it is for him because he has that great henge in play. Yeah, interestingly, with the two love struck beasts, one in hand, one on the battlefield, getting a 1-1 on the battlefield and getting it to stick has become pretty important for Kovartek, and it's going to be difficult for him to do so. The only one he has access to right now is the Heart's Desire here from this love struck beast, and that can die to Scorching Dragonfire even with anything else happening here. He is going to go for Heart's Desire, though. Oh, and look at this. Jensen's considering ionizing this right now. That means that the other Love Struck Beast won't be able to attack, and Kvartek won't be able to play Love Struck Beast. This is actually a very tempting target for Ionize. Yeah, absolutely. But at the same time, you have to know that Kvartek has probably at least one Murderous Rider in hand, right? I mean, he's got yes. four cards in hand. There were turns where he just simply passed and di didn't do a whole lot here, so just kind of weighing out his options. If he does fire off Ionize, Gadwick would also trigger and tap down the Lovestruck Beast, which would mean that no matter what, he's not taking damage, even if Kvartek had, you know, four 1-1s one -ones in hand or whatever. Exactly. No, Huey says, I can get away with letting you have that, and I'm going to do so. And he wants to go to combat, and it looks like Jensen's going to allow that to happen as well. He does have Ral's Outburst and Scorching Dragonfire. The Outburst would trigger Gadwick, but he's decided against it. Yeah, playing it safe here, it looks like. He can actually kill the Love Struck Beast if he really wants, but then he's not going to have counters up, so... Oh, sure, he can use Outburst and Dragonfire right. on it. Right, but that doesn't feel great, especially when Kvartek is holding four cards in hand and has access to eight mana. Right. No, he's going to go Outburst upstairs, though he did this after Love Struck Beast attack. Oh, and heads up here, he's actually doing it to tap down the Great Henge, so Kvartek won't be able to use the mana, but Kvartek of course, has Murder Spreader, so can at least use one of the mana from the Great Henge. That's right. Instant speed creatures here. That works, too. Now, Ionize can counter Murderous Rider, probably will, but as you see, Kvartek has set this up beautifully. He's got three more mana plus a Murderous Rider at the ready. Well, well you let that resolve. happen, too. And Kvartek deciding whether or not he wants to cast another Swift End, but it's not really going to matter here. He can't really play around Quench, right? If he, if he let's say, had another land in play, maybe he wants to cast the Swift End on Murderous Rider, but here it doesn't really matter. So down to eight goes Kvartek, and this Ral's Outburst now gets to resolve, and we'll see what Jensen finds with it. Looks like one of the cards is Opt. Yeah, very curious to see what Chris is going to follow this up with. Looks like Jensen took Opt and uh, did not take a Giant. Of course, one of the cards that Jensen's going to have his eye out for here is another copy of Gadwick. 
Yeah, and Jensen, I mean, he's getting close. He might, I mean, his plan is to just try to find a way to burn out Chris here. As the game goes longer, it's going to be more difficult here for Huey because Great Henge is in play. That's right. This is Murderous Rider, actual Murderous Rider being cast here from an adventure. And as you mentioned, it's actually a big problem. Three, four lifelinkers, those will take over a game very quickly against a, a deck that doesn't have that much in the way of uh, hard removal. It's all burn-based removal or bounce. Yeah, so if he chooses to ionize here, he can counter, tap down the 1-1, one, one, get Kvartek down to 6, then he's going to have an attack here from the Gatwick and put him down to 3. So if he finds something like a Rouse Outburst, this would be lethal. Oh, boy, so close for Jensen. <laughs> We're playing for top 8 here. Yeah. No wiggle room whatsoever, and Jensen's going to take a little bit of time here to figure out if he can get around this. Remember, one of the other things to consider along those lines, Paul, is Gadway can also tap down Murderous Rider. So even if, you know, it is going to be a 3-4 Murderous Rider, then there's a trigger on the stack as well right. thanks to the Great Henge. So that works too. I did forget about that part. Right. I thought it came in with the counter, right. so... And are we going to see an upkeep Castle Vantress activation? Looks Does like seem to be the case. Uh, super close game. There's wow. a Gadwick, okay. though, for William Huey Jensen. That is absolutely massive for him. He can kind of protect things right now with Ionize, play his land next turn, guaranteed play another land, and Gadwick for the whole world. But keep in mind, I mean, next turn, Kavartek is going to have access to nine mana, and Huey is only going to be able to counter one of those spells. So Chris can potentially muster up a board so wide that even if Huey draws a bunch of cards, he might just be too behind on board. Chris drinks, drinks a lot of water. <laughs> Got to stay hydrated. He knows the importance of it. Well, he's working his way to becoming uh, a nutritionist, I believe. That's right. Edgewall Innkeeper. Wow, more value. Too, so not too bad at all here. Jensen trying to find his way through, and he's got the tools now. You have to think that with the Gadwick, he could find a win here, but his life total is getting low, and let's just say Kavartek's not low on action himself. Oh, not at all. The and Great Henge plus Edgewall Innkeeper plus two Murderous Rider. Yeah, and keep in mind, I mean, look at this Kavartek knowing that he doesn't have a lethal attack here, keeps the token back because he doesn't want to die to Gadwick here. He can also gain life here with the Great Henge. Here's another great turning point in this game. Jensen has to decide if Edgewall Innkeeper is worth an Ionize. It's worth a lot of cards to Kavartek. Chris can draw so many cards here, potentially. Right. One off the Henge, and then the Murderous Riders on top of it. Yeah. Huey doesn't know. The only thing that he knows is that there's a Lovestruck Beast that's currently on an adventure. So. At the very least, if this resolves, Chris Kavartek will be able to run out Love Struck Beast. Also, of course, the Edgewall Innkeeper. All creatures replace themselves here. Yep. So Innkeeper hits the battlefield, becomes a 2-2. On the flip side, Chris is also thinking, okay, he probably has a counter. How do I want to sequence my spells? Because this is the most important turn of this game. That's right. This is absolutely huge. Jensen needs to keep control of this board on some level so that he can have the time to leverage the cards he can get from Gadwick next turn. But that, Chris Kavartek is gonna make that extremely difficult. Jensen's gonna fire off Ionize here, but the Edgewall Innkeeper is gonna trigger anyway. Back down to five goes Chris. He and I, th I think Chris probably wants to get that Gadwick off the battlefield. It's just so scary. However, if you do, you go down to three and you die to a Rouse Outburst, oh potentially. Oh, goodness sakes. Okay, it looks so like he's not going he's to. Not he's going to. He's, he's just going to cast two Murderous Riders. Yeah, and he uh, did he play a land for this turn? Yes. Okay. All right, this is the turn here for Huey. He's at five still though, Chris, so he's actually clear of that. Oh, it's another Gadwick. All the Gads. But Chris Kavartek did a fantastic job of absolutely flooding that board. Yeah. And um, 
Huey is now trying to think about like the sequence of draws here with Gadwick that would potentially allow him to sneak through enough damage. But it's going to be too difficult because he needs to somehow find a way to tap down all three of these creatures in play, get in for three, and then get in for two additional points of damage. Yeah, I mean, it's not impossible, but without knowing, you know, any of the cards on top of your library, it's just too much. Because, you know, you can use Gadwick to trigger other Gadwick and get tap downs if that's a thing. Right. Now, one sequence of cards that Huey can find is lots of ops into yes. Bone Crusher Giant. That's what he needs. That is That would be perfect. And you see Jensen trying to set this up. Look, he's not going for the full Gadwick here. Oh, additionally, Brazen Borrower plus Bone Crusher Giant does that as well. Oh, because easily. Brazen Borrower gets rid of two creatures. Yes, it actually gets rid of three if you have the full mana. So does he find he found it? He Bone Crusher, Bone Crusher, oh, and another Gadwick. One damage short. He could just double Bone Crusher, but he didn't oh, quite get there. Man, you got to give credit to Chris Kavartek here for not putting himself in range of, you know, a couple of Burn Spells or Arouse Outbursts from this position. Yeah, imagine if he just used Swift End on the Gadwick. He'd be dead here. Yes. Jensen is looking at the puzzle in front of him. Pair of Bone Crusher Giants plus Gadwick in hand, and he can't see any way out. And Chris Kavartek had simply built up too big of an advantage for Jensen to overcome. Chris wins game number one. Wow. And I really love the way he played that game, too. Beautifully. He played it slow. He was very patient. Didn't just jam all of his threats immediately. Just continued passing. Uh, you know, making sure you hit your land drops. Very, very important against these counterspell decks. And ultimately just had, you know, all the mana in the world. And Huey, even with a Gadwick, just wasn't able to keep up with the card advantage generated by all of those adventure cards. Yeah, the interesting, because it's a sequencing thing, right? Like, when you play Gadwick, you generally tap most or all of your mana, and then you need to untap again, and then you can take full advantage of all those cards. But when Chris plays his cards, he plays one and gets to draw a card and then can change course, right? right? You know, he, if he has the great hand out like he did that time, or if he has edge, hall, edge wall innkeeper, like he also had that time, you know, he plays an adventure creature, he draws two cards, and now he can say, oh, actually, I'll do this instead. Yeah. And things getting... Uh Potentially even better here for Chris after Cyborg has access to the very powerful Shifting Ceratops. Really, really difficult threat for Huey to deal with. Actually, the, the only reasonable, the, the only decent options he has is just casting Bone Crusher Giant and hoping it sticks. And then, of course, the two copies of Lava Coil that he brought in. All right, there's hope for Huey here, though. Chris Kavartek just ran out of water. Ooh. Yeah, he finished Ooh. it off. He won't yeah. have any for the rest That's of the rough. next two games, so he draws his power. <laughs> You know, he's one of those players, he actually carries like a gallon jug of water with him. He's one of those guys, mm. you know, the gallon jug of water guy. One of those. Yeah. All right, let's get into game number two. This could be the decider. If you're sitting in Chris Kavartek's seat and if <laughs> William Huey Jensen is mulliganing to six here as well. That's a good six. That is a fine hand. Nothing going on here on turn one for Kavartek. And Huey's got potentially a nice aggressive start here. If Chris doesn't have removal, which he currently doesn't, he can just run out Brineborn Cutthroat and has a ton of spells to continue growing this Cutthroat. I assume that Jensen just lets this happen as he really wants to get the Cutthroat on the battlefield. Yes. And sure, take a Quench, take an Opt, take a Dragonfire, but I need to get a damage source flowing here. He's going to take Quench away. There's Heart's Desire. Yeah, and Chris really wants to take the quench because he really needs to find removal, right? He wants to find a swift end, and he also just wants his Vivian to, to, to resolve. Wow, okay, and he also just found Murder Shredder here. That's right, so things starting to look good for Kavartek. Here's an opt. If he can hit something... Quench would be great. Quench would be fantastic. Then he can keep the attacks going. Kavartek's like, just miss. Bottom. Temple of Epiphany, that's not it. Lovestruck Beast is going to hit the battlefield, and that's going to slow down Jensen a lot. I think Jensen's just going to go for the Scorching Dragon fight. He just wants to continue growing the Cutthroat. Also, he doesn't, he doesn't want to take five here from the Lovestruck Beast either. That's right. There's another Opt, and we're going to see Temple of Epiphany perhaps reveal that top card to Jensen. He also has Gadwick the Wizened, his trademark card for the tournament, in hand, though it's a little early for it just yet. And Huey... Agonizing over the scry here. 
Chris Kvartek on a meteoric rise to the top of competitive magic, capitalizing on strong finishes here at Mythic oh, Championships. Look at and this. this is, of course, a huge deal, and Jensen is not happy about it. He's looking and saying, well, I can try to opt, but does he know his top card? It's a yep. Fabled Passage. He can opt bottom Fabled Passage and hope to hit Quench, Quench or even desperate. potentially a Brazen Borrower. The reason why he kept the land on top was his plan next turn was to just slam Gadwick for two. Yeah, that's what he's going to stick with here. But the Great Henge is such a fantastic tool for Chris Kvartek. Things moving very sharply in his direction here. We're going to see Fable Passage get cracked immediately. Go get an island and play Gadwick. Excuse me, a mountain and play Gadwick. Yeah, but I mean, Chris is so ahead of you. I mean, he's got to be feeling great about this, right? You're about to untap with the Great Henge in play, and Huey tapped out. You don't have to worry, be worried about counters. Just play all the best spells you, that you have, because the window is open right now. And by the way, he just drew his best sideboard card. Shifting Ceratops has protection from almost all of Jensen's deck. Yeah. And it takes multiple removal, red removal spells to kill it. Although, the funny thing about that is with shifting Ceratops specifically, you can actually wait because even if Huey untaps, he can't counter the shifting Ceratops. So if anything, you want to be running out the spells that you know could be countered on the future turn. It is funny. Spells with uncounterable, you want to, ta you want to cast them into your opponent's mana that they were holding up presumably for a counter spell. So we're going to see that here. Rotting Registrar, you know what? Not big enough. Let's oh, make it an 8-7 plus Vivian Arcbow Ranger. That's, is that a dead Gadwick or maybe a Cutthroat? It's a Gadwick. Gadwick, yeah, yeah, because you can make as many huge, dumb creatures as you want. Gadwick can tap them down and lead yeah. to huge damage sources here for Jensen. Is he just going to play the other Gadwick this time? I think, I mean, he has to, but I mean, Maybe Chris, considering keeping up the opt man. Chris here. has just such an overwhelming board presence here. Yeah. He could Gadwick for two, keep up opt just so he doesn't take eight here from the Rotting Registrar, potentially 10 because the Vivian's in play. It looks like he's decided he just needs to go for it. Rotting Registrar is going to get rid of Foulmire Knight here, but there's Edgewall Innkeeper oh, as well. And this one has really slipped away from Jensen. Chris Kvartek, again, really just storming onto the professional magic scene, able to chain together multiple events. And now he looks like he's poised for a top eight here. I mean, what a season for him. Seriously. Right? What a breakout year. He's kicking things off with a Mythic Championship top eight, followed by two qualifications get out of the through the I Arena mean. Mythic Championship the qualifier way. system. Two times the hard way. Here's duress now from Kvartek on the on the verge of another top eight, just blasting his way onto the pro scene. He had a tough challenge here with William Huey Jensen, but things look fantastic now for 16. Kvartek. Attack you for 16. How about that? No real way to interact here for Jensen. Even a double block on the registrar would not see it die. Also, keep in mind that, that they have trample given to Vivian Arcbow's plus ability here. Well, they're not going to need to trample this attack, are they? Yeah. Jensen is doing math, trying to find any possible way that he could steal a game back. If anybody could do it, it's Huey. But this one looks almost in the books here. <laughs> Kvartek at 26 yeah. life. Kvartek just brute forcing this with just pure power. That's right. The Great Henge coming down after Lovestruck Beast kind of turboed it out. And he's been able to lean on that, really empty out his hand. And now, boom, attack you for 16 with two creatures thanks to Vivian Arcbow Ranger. Now he can take this, go down to four. But I mean, how is he? I don't. How is he going to deal with the shifting Ceratops? That's the big question That's here, right? That's the issue for sure. He, he's he, got Bone Crusher. He'd need another two. <laughs> yeah, he's got the Bone What's Crusher. Going on? He's got the Bone Crusher for the Vivian, but he simply just doesn't have an answer for shifting Ceratops. He could, yeah. I don't know uh, what, what he sideboarded. We weren't looking at, at his sideboard when he did, but, you know, there is Lava Coil in his sideboard. He could find that in conjunction with Bone Crusher Giant. But it is very much desperation time. Yeah, a second Bone Crusher Giant somehow isn't good enough here. He needs a third. Oh, right. Lava Coil here, I suppose, would be yeah. able to kill the Shifting Ceratops. Yeah. But even if he does, then he won't be able to actually kill the Vivian, right? So, so there's just too much 
pressure here. It's just so much on William Huey Jensen's plate here. It does not feel like there's a way out. Chris Kavartek simply has to wait. He probably has an upkeep stop for his murderous rider. And there's just really not much else to be done here if you're sitting in Kavartek's seat. He's done his job. He's put out huge creatures, shifting Ceratops, Rotting Registor, Lovestruck Beast, all on the battlefield. Funny part about Lovestruck Beast is the innkeepers <laughs> <laughs> somehow bigger now. Can't Thanks attack. Great henge. But yeah, at any rate, huge amount of power plus Vivian Arcbo Ranger, the card that Kavartek, he so somehow ma manages to find, uh, to put that card into all of his decks, regardless right. of the other <laughs> colors he's playing. It's just, It's got to be his favorite card, right? I'll take that, Chris, says Huey. Vivian down. So now Huey can just run out, I suppose, a Bone Crusher Giant has the ability to run out Brianborn Cutthroat to tap something down. But Kavartek has Murderous Rider at the beginning of upkeep with the Rotting Register trigger on the stack. You're going to see Swift in on Bone Crusher Giant, and Chris is going to make the top eight of this event. Wow, congratulations here to Chris Kavartek as he goes through the motions and secures his seat. Again, when you sit down across from William Huey Jensen in the last round of a tournament, that is not where you want to be. And he was calm, cool, and collected as he moved his way through. And Chris Kavartek, another top eight. What? I mean, th what a season. This year has been completely unbelievable for him. He has a top eight. Now this is the second top eight. This is the second arena event that he's qualified for. And also keep in mind, the last event, he made a deep run at the last event as well. 